Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome, welcome. This is our Duolingo training. Today we're going to talk about how to set up your classroom for success in very, very easy, quick steps here at schools.duolingo.com. A really easy way to find this too is if you go to Google and type in Duolingo Schools. Mine is already up there because it's I use it a lot. But if you do Duolingo Schools, it'll come right up and you can set up your own account that way too. So we are all capable educators here, so we know to click the login button. And if you need a new account, you can hit create account. But this is my uh, username and password here that's already set up. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And once I click this here, it's going to take me to my magical dashboard. This here has all of my classrooms on here. Now, this is an older one that I had, and I wanted to keep it on here to show you what it's going to look like in here. When you click on the classroom, it's going to show you the students that are in here, as well as how many points they have earned. And you can invite new students using this link here. And we're going to talk more about that when we create our own classroom. I find that the classroom link is the easiest, but this is good for littles if you need something that doesn't have to do with them creating their own account. Yes. So if we go back to my dashboard here, let's go ahead and create a new classroom so that you can see what this looks like from the job. I'm going to hit this right button here that says create another classroom. And for me, I have Espanol 2. Let's see if I can grab my accent here. Don't judge me for my accent usage. No, let me cut being pissed. All right, cool. I have two sections of Spanish 2 and one section of French 1. So I'm going to create my Spanish 2 section first because that's first period. So my students are studying Spanish, but my students also speak English. If you change this for my French friends, I'm going to click this for my second period class. Hit continue. How do you want to invite students? This again depends on how old your students are and what you want to do. For me, I'm going to share the classroom link, and I like using the PDF option with that. But let's just look at this for a second and see what it does. If you want to create accounts for your students, you add each student name here and then you add them. Let's just do sample student and see what happens. Add. So when you go to this person's name, you can remove student if you make a mistake, all that good stuff. I'm going to remove sample student because he's not a real student and then we're going to go back to create an account for my students wait no no that's what i just said i want this one share a classroom link so you can do this i like to share the code on remind that is definitely very helpful but the easiest way to do this especially for keeping it year round and making sure that your kids stay connected to your classroom is having the classroom code. I take this classroom code and I write it down on a post-it note, stick it on my laptop, and that way anytime I have a new student who comes in I can add them to the classroom really quickly. And you'll see in a minute what happens with this and how students use it. Continue. This is my favorite way to do this. I'm going to download the printable setup instructions for students. And when I do that, I'm going to put that in my Where am I going to put you? Let's put you in Spanish 2 2019 because I'm definitely going to need this. Duolingo Classroom. Save. You're going to get a unique PDF for each class that you set up. So it's important that you save it in the right place like I did here. So if you look at this PDF, you're going to see that it's got really, really simple instructions for how 
students can join up with your class. You've got Espanol 2 here. Oh, actually, I need to go back and change that because I want that to say period 1. Okay, well, I'll do that later. If you're on a computer, they can copy and paste this link. And then down here, it's got all the instructions that they need to do, no matter what device they're on, if you want them to do it on a device. And then it has here at the bottom their classroom code. What I usually do is I take this PDF, I take all of my little children's down to the library, and I set up a Duolingo day where I show them how to use Duolingo, how to sign up for it, and I have on my Edmodo site this PDF attached that they have to go in and use in order to sign up. And then when it's already on the computer, watch this. This is the best part. All you got to do is click the link. And it'll cut up, come up for them. You are joining the classroom. If they already have an account, it will show up here. If they don't, it will prompt them to create an account. It is so easy. So I'm going to hit continue. And look, here I am. So now that we're in Duolingo.com, let me show you what it's going to look like for your students if they don't have an account yet. So let's jump out of this and say log out. This is the screen that's going to come up if they don't have an account yet, which is going to be the majority of your people. So you're on English. You can hit login if you do have an account. I'm going to say get started. So I teach Spanish and French. So since I'm doing, uh, I did a bunch of stuff for Spanish, let's do French. Let's say I'm a French learner. And this goal thing can kind of drive people crazy because what it is, is it's a notification system that shows up on your screen because it connects to your email account. And it also can connect to the app on your phone if you download it on your phone, which most of my students choose to do. So I would kind of just leave it at regular and set goal. Do not let them hit serious or insane because it will get seri both serious and insane very quickly. So hit set goal, or you can honestly just ignore it and hit create profile. Now here you put an age to make sure that they're not too young, and then you put the name here, whoever you are. Let's put my husband's name on there. Let's make him an account. And then you put your email, and you create a password, and you can also sign up with Google or Facebook, and it's really, really easy. I'm going to put in this fake password. I see what I mean. Oh, oops. Yeah, that's right. I already have an account. Um, but you can kind of see how it works here. And then they're going to go into sign in and you'll see what happens. Let me use my school account. So I don't have to use my school account just for purposes. Oh, <laughs> I've already done that too. Uh, sorry, Russell. You have a Google account now. Wow, he already has one too. God, everybody has one. All right, but you get the gist here. You're going to create an account. I know he's my working. Okay, every everything under the sun already has an account, so let's just do sign in. I love Duolingo. All my people have it. Don't worry about it. So I'm gonna sign in, and now it's gonna take you to this. But let me show you what it looks like under a different language, and you'll kind of see how. It looks when you are a totally fresh, 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 fresh from the beginner. What do we want to learn, guys? <gasps> Let's do Russian. Start course. So when you start a course from scratch, it's going to show you this. You have up here your user, profile, settings, all that good stuff. And this is where you get points and fun things like that. This is what it looks like for students when they are starting out from the jump. If you are teaching kids who have at least a little bit of experience, I would recommend they do the placement test. When they do the placement test, it gives them, it's like a 10 minute test that they go through to kind of see what they're at. Or you start from the very, very, very first lesson, which is for them, 
in Minos for Russian, it's going to be the alphabet because that alphabet is crazy different. And these are all the different lessons that you can do. I sometimes assign my kids lessons. I sometimes assign them points. And we'll go back to that so I can show you what you need to do. This is their daily goal that they need to do. And once they're signed up with a class, it will show up here what their assignments are. It is really, really cool. So let's go back to, now that you've seen what it looks like for the student experience, this is at least enough to get you started. Let's go and look at what it looks like again for the teacher. So after I've created my classroom code, I'm gonna hit continue. There's me. I'm the only student. Here is how you create an assignment. And you can use this as a guide if you need it. This is the best part about Duolingo Classrooms, is that you can look here and see what all is in every single lesson. Every single one. And you can jump right here to assign the skill if you like it. Now, the cool thing about assigning a skill is that it can be in whatever order you want, which is awesome. You don't have to start right from the very beginning circle. You can kind of move down as you want. You can also do these really cool things called power practice, which is a lesson that you can do on your smart board with your, with your kids. And they, Duolingo, once you have kids in here, it will show you how many kids have completed it and where they're at and what they need to work on, like even specific words. So let's say I need to work on intro and say start practice. It's going to bring you to this window that you can project on your screen where the whole class can work on tasks together. It is really, really cool. So let me show you what this looks like. I am a man. Soy. Un hombre. Bet you didn't know that, right? Check. And then it tells you whether you are right or not at the bottom. If you got issues, you can report it. People have discussed it down here. And this is what lessons look like the whole time on Duolingo for students. And so this is a way that they can practice all as a class. Let's get back to assigning classrooms and students and all that good stuff. So let's go back to my classrooms. Espanol 2, I'm the only one in here. And you can do invite students, but let me show you quickly how to make an assignment. My students are going to be signing up for Duolingo today, and they're going to be in the library. So I want to create points for them. So. When you're doing points, this is my favorite one to do. I like to do the 100 XP. It kind of gives you an idea of how much work it is right here. My kids are going to be in the library for an hour and a half, so I want them to get a good start going. This is the time I'm going to start it because that's what time it is right now. And I'm going to say that it is due February. I'm going to say that it's due today. This is my first period class. So they'll be done around 10.30, so it's due at 11. Well, I'll be nice. Let's give them 12 o'clock in case they need ILT or whatever. And then you hit Schedule Assignment. The beautiful part about this is since I am assigned in the class, I'm going to get a notification if my email is set up that says, hey, you have an assignment due. Now, once you go through here, this green part, it's going to show you who has done it, who completed it late, past the timestamp you wanted, and who did not do it at all. If your kids are not signed up through the class code, they're going to have trouble with this. And I'll make a later, I'll make a video later about troubleshooting Duolingo problems. But for now, this is where I will leave you to try starting to create classrooms. Buena suerte, bonne chance, and I hope that you have a really good success with setting up Duolingo for your classroom.